joining us today. So we are going over the training for forming and licensing your business in the state of Missouri. So this is about, you know, looking at the kind of entities that you have available, where you can, um, what type of entity you can file as, and then, you know, getting that done. This is brought to you by the Jefferson Franklin Community Action Corporation, by the Small Business Resource Center, and we are funded by the Small Business Administration. The Small Business Resource Center is a nonprofit organization brought to you by the Jefferson Franklin Community Action Corporation. We are funded by the U.S. Small Business Administration through the Community Navigator Pilot Program. We provide no-cost consulting to entrepreneurs and small businesses in Jefferson, Franklin, Washington, St. Francis, and St. Genevieve counties in Missouri. We also connect these clients with resources or spokes to assist them free of charge with other services such as accounting, legal, marketing, and funding through loan application assistance. As a disclaimer, the purpose of this presentation is to provide general information only. It is not intended to be a comprehensive summary of any ordinances, regulations, and or laws. The information presented does not constitute legal advice. One should always contact their attorney, CPA, and or any other professional or authoritative agency with any questions and or concerns. Another note, this is a general how-to and may not apply to all business types and entities. Always check with an attorney, CPA, or the necessary government agencies for the specific requirements for your business type. So some of the things that we're gonna be going over today is deciding on your business, legal entities, registering your business, your tax IDs, unemployment insurance taxes, and local requirements. So deciding on your business. You ladies have it figured out. So you've already chosen your business idea. That's amazing. So choosing a business name. You wanna make sure that you do check the Missouri Secretary of State website to ensure there's not already a business registered under that name. Brittany is actually going to be sharing that link in the chat if you would like to you know, save that for later or visit it or take a look around. That business search, you go in there and you know Jennifer, just for an example, if your thing was literally Jennifer's mobile hair salon, you could look that up on there and see if somebody already has that registered or not. If they don't, you can file uh, your business name under it. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so if there isn't one registered under that name, that's how, where you can register your name. If they do have that registered, then you would need to choose a different name or change it up just a little bit. Now, you'll wanna decide on what type of legal entity this will be. It can be a limited liability company, a corporation, a sole proprietorship, or a partnership. So to explain what some of these are, a professional corporations are for persons licensed to practice certain professions, accountants, attorneys, physicians, real estate salesperson, et cetera. A sole proprietorship or a general partnership can be formed without the involvement of the Secretary of State. However, Missouri law does require a fictitious name registration, also known as a DBA, if, a business, if the business is being conducted under a name other than the individual's. So for example, uh, Brittany wants to open a, a store, Brittany's Bakes but she doesn't file with the state of Missouri, the Secretary of State of Missouri, her articles of incorporation. That's fine, she can do that. But if she names it Brittany's Bakes, and that's the sign that she puts on the building, and that's the name printed on the receipt, that's the name on all of her invoices, things like that, she does have to file that fictitious name registration with the state of Missouri. Now, it is also worth mentioning as a fictitious name registration, there can be multiple fictitious name registrations with the same name. So there can be four Brittany, Brittany's Bakes as a fictitious name registration. But if it was Brittany's Bakes LLC, it, she couldn't do that if it was already existing. 
So that brings us to our limited liability company. This may designate one or more managers to operate its business, or it may choose to operate under the direction of its members. This comes to limited partnerships. They must have at least one general partner and at least one limited partner. Until registered, both types of partners are equally responsible for any debt and obligations. And then there's limited liability, limited partnerships. This gives all partners limited liability and the freedom to manage the business as if they were general partners. All partners in an LLP can be involved in the active management of the business, unlike the setup in a limited partnership formation. So just to go over some of the pros and cons for these different types. So for an LLC, it's unique because this is better for the max flexibility in how you manage and run your business. A board of directors is not required and you can have unlimited owners or members. For your protections and taxation, you are not personally on the hook for business liabilities and you're taxed once or twice and you're free to choose which can help minimize your taxes. Now, a couple drawbacks. Ongoing filings and fees to stay in compliance. LLCs cannot go public, so you cannot uh, share, sell shares of an LLC, and they are not recognized globally, so you may be taxed as a corporation in other counties, and I'm uh, sorry, in other countries. For an S Corp, these are better for smaller corporations. There are 100 shareholders or owners max, and owners can only get common stock. Whenever it comes to protection and taxations, you're still like an LLC, not personally on the hook for any business liabilities, but you are only taxed once and only the shareholders pay on the profits received. The drawbacks of this, again, like an LLC, there are ongoing filings and fees to stay in compliance. There's less management flexibility because you must have a board of directors. And there's more administration rules. There are strict rules about holding meetings and keeping records, and all shareholders must be US citizens or residents. Which brings us to a C Corp. This is best if you plan to go public one day and sell shares of your business. Sorry, it's kind of like Sally sells seashells by the seashore. I'm over here with a lot of stitches today. Um, so again, if you plan to sell shares of your business, a C Corp can be good. And you can issue those shares to founders, employees, and investors. But unlike an S Corp, a C Corp allows unlimited owners or shareholders. And owners may get preferred stock. C Corps are recognized internationally, and they're actually preferred by investors. Now, for protections and taxations, again, like an S Corp and an LLC, you're not personally on the hook for business liabilities but you are taxed twice. The business pays at a corporate level and the shareholders pay on the income they receive. A couple drawbacks, again, ongoing filings and fees to stay in compliance. And there is less management flexibility, just like a S Corp, C Corps must have a board of directors. And again, they have those more administration rules with strict rules about holding meetings and keeping records. So last but not least is the sole proprietorship. This is better if you need an easy setup. There's no paperwork to start and you may still, but you may still need a DBA or business license to operate legally. Again, here in Missouri, you do need a DBA unless you literally do business as your own name. And you can only have one owner, hence the sole proprietorship. For this, the protections and taxations, this one, you are personally on the hook for business liabilities. You are taxed once and you pay on the profits that are listed on your personal tax return. And there is less hassle and a separate tax return is not needed. As far as drawbacks, again, there is no personal liability protection. So with the sole proprietorship, it's slightly easier to set up, but 
filing articles of incorporation for an LLC is just as easy as filing for a fictitious name. And when you do that, the LLC provides you with that Again, limited liability. So you're not personally on the hook for business liabilities. With a sole proprietorship, if someone sues the business, they are suing you as a person. As a business, any debts you accrue, you as a person accrue those debts. So that's something to think about whenever you're setting up your business entity. So we're gonna do a quick scenario and then Brittany is going to put a poll up for us and you guys uh, can put on there what kind of corporation or business entity you think it is. So for this first scenario, widget company is a larger business. It has many founders and investors. So they, ugh, so they all could profit further from the business they became owners, AKA shareholders. There are 225 owners of widget company. Widget Company's entity type is recognized internationally as well. Widget Company has a board of directors with strict rules about holding meetings and keeping records. Widget Company is actually taxed twice. The business pays at the corporate level and the shareholders pay on the income received. What type of business entity is Widget Company? And Brittany's got that poll up if you guys are able to select what you think. And it is anonymous. So, um, you know, don't don't feel like you're under any pressure. We can't see who answers what. <laughs> All right. And it looks like everybody is going for Decor, nice. All right, good job. Okay, so let me get this back up. Oh, and it goes right back, look at that. All right, so for scenario two, Brittany Boyer has opened a bakery. She did not file any paperwork with the Secretary of State for Articles of Incorporation, though. Brittany is the only owner of her business, and she is personally liable for any debts or liabilities of the businesses. If you purchase a cake from Brittany, the receipt shows the name as Brittany's Bakes. Brittany did file a fictitious name registration with the state of Missouri, so Brittany Boyer can do business under the name Brittany's Bakes. Also, Brittany is the only tax, Brittany is only taxed once on the profits in her personal property tax or in her personal tax return. Goodness. What type of business entity does Brittany have? And she's got another poll coming up. There we go. Looking good, all right. Good, good, good. Everybody's on the same page here, good deal. Maybe I should have been a teacher, guys. <laughs> so, now it's time to register your business. In the state of Missouri, there is no state business license required. However, you do need to register your business entity with the state of Missouri. Here's how. You can visit the Missouri Secretary of State website, which Brittany's sharing that link in there for you. Choose Start a Business, and this will direct you to the page with all the necessary information and forms needed. You can also find guides and helpful resources at the other link where Brittany is sharing at mo.gov for user guides. Now, on here, when you go to the Secretary of State's website, you can choose what entity you want to start. If you want to start an LLC, if you want to start an S-Corp, a C-Corp, or if you want to file for that fictitious name. 
<clears throat> excuse me, fictitious name registration. Once you choose that, it provides all of the correct paperwork for you. So you don't have to wade through, okay, well, I wanna start an LLC, which one of these is the right one? It directs you in, in, the, in the right direction. It's very nice, it's very easy. So for your tax IDs, why do you need tax IDs? There are various reasons, such as opening a business bank account, obtaining a business loan or line of credit, and processing and filing payroll taxes. This is important because as a business owner, you want to make sure your personal and your business finances are separate. Do not pay your personal electric bill out of your business account and do not pay your supplies for your business out of your personal bank account. You don't wanna mix your money. You always wanna keep them separate. So on a federal level, an employer identification number or EIN, or this is also called a federal employer identification number, which is an FEIN, you'll see it both ways, I promise, is used to identify a business entity much like an individual's social security number. You can apply on the IRS website at irs.gov backslash EIN. This is a free service. And again, Brittany has this um, link in the chat for you. So on a state level, a Missouri tax ID, also known as a sales tax license, must be obtained by a business if it sells goods or provides a taxable service. You can register on the Missouri Department of Revenue website at dor.mo.gov backslash register slash business. Again, that link's in the chat. And then you've got unemployment insurance taxes. If your small business has an employee working in Missouri, you may be liable for Missouri state unemployment insurance tax contributions. To find out if you are liable, you can visit the Missouri Department of Revenue website. Brittany's got that link in there for you. Or you can contact a CPA, which, hint, hint, if you don't have one, we got you. <laughs> oh, why didn't it come over? Did it change for me? Sorry, guys. So once you've done all of that, you need to check for your local requirements. This is a big one, and this is where a lot of people get caught up. Local requirements can be very strict. Due diligence is key. You need to check with your local city and county agencies regarding licensing and permits, sales taxes, business property tax, zoning regulations, and other local requirements to lawfully operate a business within their jurisdiction. So some towns don't, some cities don't allow certain types of businesses. Some counties don't allow certain types of businesses. So you need to check and make sure that your county and your city will allow your type of business. As far as zoning regulations, that's a big one too. If somebody is running a mechanic shop out of their home garage in Jefferson County, for sure, they are, and it's not, a, it's not zoned commercially, they are going to get in trouble. They are going to get a citation by the county and then they're gonna to have to come to court and then they're gonna to have to pay a fine. And if they wanna get it zoned commercial, there has to be a hearing, they have to make updates. I'm pretty sure they require an asphalt or concrete driveway now. So there's just a lot of things. And then, yeah, like Michael said, if you're not comfortable with completing these steps, excuse me, we're able to assist you with these processes. All right, so do you have any questions at this point? I do not. All right. So we are always trying to bring up-to-date trainings, um, needed trainings and demand trainings. Are there any kind of trainings Will we get a list of these links? We can absolutely email you a list, yes. Um, so 
what type of trainings do you guys feel that you're in need of that you're searching for or something that you're having trouble with that we might be able to help with? I would say the startup loaning, um, that kind of stuff is what I would need help with. Um, as far as everything else, I pretty much have that covered considering, you know, I already have a small business. So I know the rules and stuff about that. So obtaining startup funding? Yeah. Okay. I, I have a question about like multi-level. Um, I was advised by the banker that I'm working with to that I should have um, the facility as one LLC and then have a holding company or, or another entity over that to keep um, basically like, uh, like, I don't know, I don't know exactly the reasons, but, but basically having to do with like liabilities and financial yeah. things and stuff like that. Can you talk yeah, and it, about it that? Sounds like, yeah, and it sounds like they're trying to, to, like you said, get that multi-level so that way possibly your company can pay uh, for a lease or rent to the company, you know, your equine company can pay uh, rent or lease payments to the property company who technically, you know, owns the stable and things well, no, like that. No, I'm buying, no, I'm buying the stable. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So, okay. So, I mean, that would definitely be something also that our attorney might be able to help you with. Okay. Um, I know that that is pretty common. So that's that's something that we could refer you out to our attorney and possibly even, you know, our CPA, of course, so that you yeah. guys can talk about that as well. Because that's kind of overlapping as well, too, right? Because you're, you're kind of right. moving money around. And then at that point, you've got multiple entities involved. So right. that's definitely something you would want to talk with both of them on and okay. highly, highly recommend it. <laughs> Okay, great. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. So now, um, are both of you registered with us or did you just register for the training? Kelly, I've actually been in contact with both of these lovely ladies and oh, don't okay. worry, I'll still be in contact with you guys. Uh, Netta, I'll actually send you the list of the entire slideshow as well as all the links. And then we could talk a little bit further about if you're wanting to pursue just getting some legal questions answered by our lawyer and I can help you with that. And um, Jennifer, the same for you. I'll reach out to you after the training and just make sure that everything's good and see what our next steps are and figure out what we need to do. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it sounds like both of you ladies, like I said, you know, you you've got your a clear vision of what you want to do. So we're here to help. And that's what our resource partners are here to do as well. Um, yeah. So um, again, that we've got our official YouTube channel now. So I think we've got three other trainings on there right now uh, that you can take a look at. Um, so you are, are welcome to visit that. This one will be up there as well. Um, so yeah, if that is it, um, that is all for me on my part. I appreciate both of you ladies, you know, uh, registering with us, being in talk with Brittany and, you know, taking that step again, hatch yourself on the back. You've come so much further than anybody else who has these dreams and they're not acting on it. So you guys are amazing and you, you guys are blazing your trail and that's awesome. And we're super proud of you and we're super happy to be a part of it. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I greatly appreciate all of, all of the help. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Anytime. You know, that's what we're here for. If you just have a random question, you know, shoot an email, give us a call. And if we don't know the answer, we, I guarantee we know somebody who does. So we're here to help. <laughs> Thank you. You are Thank welcome. Thank you. Yep. So with that, I will say again, thank you for coming today. Uh, keep an eye on different trainings that we have. If you guys have an idea about a training that you can't find, you know, shoot it over to me and I'll try my best to develop it for you. Sounds All right. Great. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of the day and wonderful weekend.
You too. You too. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Bye.